All right, hey, uh, YouTube. I just uh, decided to do kind of a quick uh, gear video, uh, just over a couple of little items that uh, that I picked up fairly recently. I've probably been using in the last, uh, I don't know, some of these things I've been using a little longer, but probably in the last uh, just six months or so. Uh, first thing I guess we'll talk about is the uh, my camera that I take hiking with me. Uh, I was trying to get a I'm not going to say a lightweight, but I was trying to get a fairly lightweight camera and uh, I was looking at several options. Uh, most of the cameras that I were looking, was looking at were around four to five ounces um, and I bought one. <laughs> I bought the uh, Casio XLM and was using it and uh, while I was overseas in Afghanistan, I decided that uh, even though those cameras were great. Um, the problem was is that they're not that rugged <laughs> and because of that uh i started looking into some more uh, cameras that were more ruggedized and i uh, came across this one this is a fujifilm uh this one's the uh xp uh xp20 is what this one is uh, they make several different versions of it depending on how much you want to pay for it i want to say this one was i think i paid around uh 80 90 dollars uh, recently, I think they're up a little over a hundred. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure why those prices do like that, but, um, uh, you can find it on Amazon or any of the other places. But, uh, the thing I like about this camera is, is it's, uh, it's waterproof, dustproof, shockproof. And, uh, it says it's freeze proof also. So, uh, this camera weighs 5.9 ounces. It's 14.1 megapixels. And like I said, I'm not I'm not as afraid to drop it or get it wet or dirty or anything like that. Uh, it does pretty decent video. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, obviously, this is not the, the uh, camera that I film with at home. Uh, I film with that Casio XLM uh, camera, but uh, uh, this is the one I take backpacking with me. I take all my still shots and all my video with this. Uh, I bought extra batteries. I have two extra batteries with it, and I've got uh, additional uh, digital cards to go in it just in case uh, for my longer trips. Uh, I really uh, don't really need the cards though. I mean, you can take several hundred pictures on a, on a single card. So, but just uh, again, it's all personal preference. But uh, this is the one I like. I've been I've been using uh, out backpacking, and uh, I would recommend it to anybody else. Uh, Again, the thing I like the most about it is I don't have to worry about it getting wet. Uh, I can put it in my little uh, pouch. This is the Z-Packs camera pouch. Uh, it fits in the pouch uh, fairly easily. Uh, it almost is like the bag is uh, designed for it because it fits like exactly into the pouch. Uh, again, this camera weighs 5.9 ounces. The uh, Zebra, uh, or sorry, Zebra, the Z-Packs Cuban fiber camera pouch. Uh, this one, I think weight on my scales at uh, 0.055 ounces. That's 0 0.055 ounces. Um, next thing uh, is the tripod. Uh, this is the Joby uh, Gorilla Pod. Uh, the Gorilla Pod weighs 1.7 ounces on my scale. This one does. Uh, that includes the detachable uh, little uh, plate that screws onto the bottom of the camera that can slide in and out of the mount. Uh, if you're going to do still shots, uh, this thing works. Uh, you can bend it, obviously, so it'll fit on different surfaces. And you can even uh, wrap it around a tree limb or you know, if you want to do a still shot off of a tree limb. I mean, it's kind of an interesting thing. It does weigh 1.7 ounces, so you ultralight hikers would probably be scoffing at that. But if you do photography while you're out and you need a small tripod, uh, you know, I've used this. I've uh, wrapped it on uh, the end of uh, bunks, the little uh, post on the end of a uh, uh, bunk and other stuff. Uh, it's, it's just kind of a cool thing. It's, it's pretty versatile in it. And for a, for a tripod, it only weighs, like I said, 1.7 ounces. Uh, comes in a variety of colors. You can get it in different colors. Um, the last one I'm going to talk about as far as um, you know, cameras go is the stick pick. Uh, I'm not sure how much of you guys have seen this. If you've seen any of the guys uh, online doing the videos that look like they're walking down the trail, and their, uh, you know, their camera is out walking with them. They're, they're probably using a hiking pole and they're using it off the stick pick. Uh, it's a pretty simple device. I want to say they're around $10. It pops on the end of your hiking pole. 
the downside of that is it pops on the end of your hiking pole. So if you're hiking and it's really muddy and it's wet and dirty, uh, this has to push on past the point that goes on the end of your hiking pole. So um, it's just one of those things. Um, it's kind of cool. I will say this, the one thing I learned with the camera in this is if you notice, I've got uh, Z-Line uh, as, a, as a little handle for my camera. And it wasn't because it was lighter, although I'm sure it, it is slightly or more durable than the, than the strap that my camera came with. But the strap that my camera came with had a little plastic uh, little thing that, that you know, you, you push it back in a slider that you push back and forth that makes the loop uh, close down on your wrist, which is real cool. Except what I found out was is what I do is when I snap this on the end of my hiking pole, this is on the end. And I usually wrap the cord around down around the hiking pole so that if the camera, for whatever reason, fell off, my camera is not going to fall and hit the ground. Well, in doing so, whether you do that or not, this uh, cord hangs down. If that plastic slider comes down, it can bang on your hiking pole while you're walking. And I had several videos that I took that uh, the reason I didn't have more videos last time was because I had several videos that once I went back and looked at them, while I'm walking, all you can hear is clack, 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 clack. And I couldn't figure out what that clicking or clacking noise was. And uh, finally, I, I was watching a YouTube a video online of someone else that said that they figured out it's that plastic clip. And you don't hear it while you're walking, but it's loud enough as it hits the camera that, it, uh, that the camera picks it up. So that's one of the reasons I won't put this Z-Line on, uh, on my camera. So I still have a wrist lanyard, so I'm not going to have a risk of dropping my camera. It can wrap around the pole as a, a second security so that if my camera falls off the stick pick, it doesn't fall all the way to the ground and uh, not have that little plastic clip that clanks on it. So anyway, um, that's enough about the cameras. Those are the, the pretty much all the only camera pieces I take with me if I'm backpacking or on most hikes. Um, but again, it's all personal preferences. Those are the things that I like and I figured I'd share them with you. Uh, stick picks, uh, if you Google search it, I want to say it's stickpicks.com, but you can Google search it. Uh, the uh, Gorilla Pods, you can get those on Amazon. It's probably the cheapest place you can find them. They sell them at REI and lots of other places. They may even sell them at Walmart. I haven't looked, but uh, it's very possible they sell them there. I think I got this one off of Amazon, so uh, that's that. Next thing is pillows. I'm going to talk about is pillows. Uh, I saw on Stick's blog, he got this uh, Ultralight Designs. Uh, flex air pillow and uh, I tried these out uh, it's really way more durable than I than I would have thought for it for as small and lightweight as this pillow is uh, it comes with a straw uh, that it's kind of like just kind of taped onto there and uh, the whole setup uh, including the straw uh, weighs a half an ounce so half an ounce for a pillow um, they get fairly decent sized uh, and they blow up fairly decent sized. Uh, this one I've used several times. It's fairly lightweight at half an ounce. Probably one of the better pillows. The downside of it is, is uh, it's, I, I like it. It's, it's fairly comfortable with my head against it, everything. And I'm one of those campers, I have to have a pillow. I'm gonna let you know right now, I cannot sleep without a pillow, period, the end. And uh, you know, I know a lot of people say, you don't have to have a pillow. I have to have a pillow. For my comfort, uh, my personal opinion, I like to have a pillow. And I have been without them, and it, it, it just makes it so much more comfortable. I know that's taking a comfort item from home, but I like a pillow. And uh, the only downside of this, I, I don't take this anymore, and the reason I don't take this anymore is because um, the noise level is very noisy. Now, I don't know if I, if I continue to use it uh, that, you know, it's like a lot of materials, if you use them, they'll soften up. Uh, for instance, like Cuban fiber, uh, if once you've used it a little while, it's usually very loud at first, but after you've used it a little while. Uh, Tyvek is very loud. Uh, in the military, I, I learned that Tyvek, to quiet Tyvek down, if you wad it up into a ball several times and un, unwind it, wad it back up into a ball several times, it'll usually get more pliable. And become more like a, a, a fabric, uh, a softer fabric, and uh, it'll become quieter. And Cuban fiber is kind of like that. Uh, use that at your own risk. But a lot of my bags, I'll wad them up, 
and unwad them several times and they become uh, feeling more like an actual, like a, a more of a, I'm not gonna say cotton, but more of an actual like fabric like that. And they definitely become quieter. Um, I don't know if this is like that or not. I'm gonna continue to use this. Uh, it's like I said, uh, surprisingly uh, this, uh, you know, even though this, uh, the, the valve on this, you take the straw, you place it in the valve, the valve's kind of long. It's just a, a thin sheet of plastic uh, that's pressed together and held together by pressure once you blow air into the pillow. Um, it held, I haven't had any leaks out of it. These, uh, you know, I believe it comes in a three pack and uh, I haven't had any leaks out of any of them. Uh, they, I was surprised that they didn't leak, to be honest with you. They, they ended up being pretty decent pillows. Like I said, the one deciding factor for me was is the noise. Uh, this thing uh, was pretty, you know, loud and crinkly as you're rolling around on it. Uh, I didn't like that. Uh, I make it, like I said, I'm gonna continue to use it and I will let you know further later how I like that. Uh, but again, if I, if I go on a serious backpacking trip, I won't take that. The thing I will take is uh, this right here. This is the uh, Z-Pax medium Cuban fiber uh, roll top bag. And it has an additional piece of um, fleece, uh, 100 weight fleece. Uh, as you can tell, I've slept on this many a night. <laughs> it's got some stuff all over it. Uh, but it's just pretty much a Cuban fiber medium bag, uh, roll top bag that has that piece of fleece sewn on half of it. Uh, the, this weighs um, 1.7 ounces and the, uh, just the, the Cuban fiber bag itself is uh, 0.65 ounces. So roughly the fleece adds about an ounce to it. So for an ounce though, this is by far for me is the most comfortable pillow I've slept on yet. And all I do is, is uh, I take and I put my sleeping bag in this. This is the bag that my sleeping bag goes in. I, uh, I put my sleeping bag into this. Uh, it's got some Velcro on the top. I ro uh, rotate the Velcro or uh, fix the Velcro, rotate this down and then snap it shut with my sleeping bag inside of it. And then when I go to sleep, I unroll it, pull my sleeping bag out, put my sleeping bag out, I invert this, and I have a uh, medium bag for the for the extra clothing uh, that I have in a three season environment, not for summer. Summer I do do it a little differently, but uh, for three season, then I take my clothing bag, I stuff other items in that, and then I uh, put it into here, and then uh, I roll this top back down like this and then Velcro it back shut. And then the Cuban fiber goes down and the uh, fleece goes up. It's very comfortable. Uh, I have slept with just a Cuban fiber and I really don't mind that, but this just was, uh, uh, you know, more comfortable. And for an ounce, uh, for me, it's worth it. Uh, I know some of the uh, grand weenies probably gonna scoff at that too, but uh, for me, I like this pillow. And for three season, this is what I'm using. Uh, for one season, for summer, I'd probably go back to this just since it's half an ounce and it's so light. But this, uh, I, I consider this, uh, since I have to have a sleeping bag stuff sack, well, you don't have to, but I do. I like to because my bag's down and this is uh, somewhat water resistant because it's Cuban fiber. Uh, this is what I use anyway. And uh, so for an ounce, I get a, I get a pillow. And uh, this is the way, this is so far as the one I like the best uh, for three season use. And enough about that, I'll stop going on and on. And then uh, a little off subject, I know these have seen a lot of use. Uh, this is by far becoming the most popular uh, sleeping pad. This is the uh, Neo Air X Lite. Uh, this is the large, and uh, this uh, this whole thing weighs. Mine weighs uh, 15. Let me take a look here. This one weighs. Um. What does this one weigh? Totally lost it. Newark. This one weighs 15.15 ounces. 15.15 ounces. Uh, the, it's a great sleeping pad. The, the, the downside is it narrows at the foot, which means that I'll, oftentimes my legs will go off the uh, sleeping mat, sleeping pad. I don't really have a problem with that. It really doesn't bother me. I, I, I like that I have less weight. So for me, this, uh, this is better. Um, 
I wish it was shorter. I wouldn't mind it even if it went down to my knee, but I like the width on it because I'm one of those people I roll over all night long. So uh, I, I love the width of the bag. I, again, I wish it was uh, only went down to about my knee length, but therefore I don't mind it being tapered at the bottom anyway. The uh, one thing I will say about this is, is when you get this, the, this is by far the loudest sleeping mat I've slept on so far. And uh, I've had quite a few sleeping mattresses, uh, including the uh, Pro Light and a bunch of the other uh, different types. Uh, I haven't had all of them, obviously, but uh, but this is by far, at least in my experience, the loudest sleeping pad. When I first got it, uh, I was trying to sleep in some of the shelters on the AT, and we just got a good laugh at how, like, all night long, because, again, I roll over all night long and uh, how loud it was. And uh, fortunately, everybody was in good humor about it. As I've used it over time, again, as it's kind of gotten crinkled up, kind of like what I was talking about earlier, I haven't wadded this one up, but as I've used it over time, it's become less and less uh, loud. But when I first got this, this was extremely loud. So uh, if you guys have any comments on how to make that better, I'd be glad to hear them. But uh, I'm really happy with it. It's good. It's great when it's, uh, it's one I take every time just because it weighs 15 point. 15 ounces so uh it's pretty lightweight for an inflatable sleeping pad uh sometimes i don't take inflatable but if i'm taking inflatable that's definitely the one i take um three season anyway all right the uh next thing i want to talk about is the camp tech microburst backpacking mattress inflator right here comes with its own little stuff sack i don't take the stuff sack um i store it in its stuff sack but i don't take it uh, I like this little item. The uh, It's kind of a neat little item. This thing weighs 2.3 ounces, at least the one I have. That's uh, just this right here with batteries. Um, that's with the lithium uh, AAAs, I believe. Um, the It takes two uh, lithium AAA batteries. Um, they recommend the lithiums it will work with the uh, regular ones right now i've got the regular ones in it i put the regular ones in it and with the large size uh, neo air i'm not sure if the batteries i got out had been used before they came out of a box so i didn't i thought they were brand new but i put it in and I, it only inflated at one time and the batteries were dead uh, since then i replaced the batteries with another set that weren't lithium and um it's I think it's inflated it I think twice so far and it's still going the uh, website says it'll inflate it much more than that I may have just had bad batteries I'm not trying to uh, knock it I'm, but I'm, all I'm trying to say is I guess is, is uh, I like this idea uh, that I especially in the winter that I'm not putting uh, moist air in my sleeping mattress uh, for obvious reasons and so I went ahead and purchased this and I'm trying it out but again, it's going to take some more testing for me to uh, really be able to say whether this was a, a good investment or not. Uh, it's like I said, everything I've seen about this and uh, uh, just playing with it, it's a cool little gadget. It's simply uh, you just open it and it turns it on. And then uh, it has this little rubber uh, nipple that you place over the uh, outlet intake outlet valve of your uh, sleeping pad and it'll inflate your mattress um, and when you're done you just simply tuck that little uh, rubber end back in and close the the door and it stops um, it's not extremely powerful but then again i mean this thing's small compact and only weighs uh 2.3 ounces so um, anyway like i said further testing with this but so far i'm impressed i kind of like this thing obviously i wish it weighed less than 2.3 ounces but i think for what it is uh, uh it's pretty small and pretty lightweight uh, next thing I'm going to talk about is the, um, uh, let's see, the two last things I have that I want to talk about is the Z-Pax uh, uh, toothbrush. I uh, saw that uh, Stick had ordered one and it made me curious and so I ordered one and I think I'm going to start taking this. It's uh, on the site, I forget what it, say, what it says that it weighed, uh, but it was way more. I think it said it weighed like 0.9 five ounces for the toothpaste for uh, the two pieces to the toothbrush in the box I want to say it weighed on the on the website on zpacks.com it said it weighed um, 
uh, I want to say 0.95 ounces, which is almost an ounce. But the one that I got, um, give me just a second here. This one weighs, uh, with the box and everything, weighed 0.7 ounces, so, uh, uh, which is roughly what the toothbrush that I had before, it weighed 0.7 ounces, so uh, I may take this one next time, I'm not really sure. I didn't have toothpaste with my uh, other toothbrush, though. That was 0.7 ounces for the toothbrush, and this one weighs uh, 0.7 ounces with the uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, and the box. So uh, I may, uh, may take that... Uh, I don't know what I may do. I probably won't end up taking the Z-Pax box. I may put it in a little Ziploc bag or something. I don't like my toothbrush to be just laying out. That's one thing I'm really particular about. But uh, uh, I may put it in a little small Ziploc. I know that probably won't reduce much, but uh, and try it out. But uh, I thought that was really cool. Let's <laughs> take Kyle one, and so I ordered one uh, just just to try it out and see what it was like. So uh, there's that. And then the last thing I want to talk about is is uh, the Aquamira water treatment. And uh, you're probably saying, why is he talking about Aquamira? Well, uh, the thing I wanna talk about is uh, the little bottles really per se that I got from uh, Lawson's equipment, Lawson's Outdoor. Uh, you can go to lawsonsoutdoor.com and uh, order these little uh, bottles. They come in the smaller bottles. Uh, the thing I really like about them is uh, they're a lot better size for what you need, especially for a weekend. I mean, these things will definitely do a, you know, three, four day trip. Um, you take these, uh, obviously for Aquamira, you have the two different um, size bottles or two different bottles. One of them has chlorine dioxide and the other one has phosphoric acid. And uh, you gotta combine them. And usually you have to wait, uh, you know, you get a little mixing cap in the original set that you buy and you, you have to wait uh, five minutes uh, for the pre-mix. And then you put it in the, uh, you know, you put it in your water, and then you have to wait, you know, 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how cold and how cloudy the solution is, or how cold and cloudy the uh, water that you're putting it into it is. Well, they also sell this little bottle. The thing I like about this little bottle is, is uh, you know, is you can find this size bottle uh, at is eye drop stuff at uh, you know different places, Walgreens and stuff like that. The thing I like about this one is, is it's it's dark you can't it's, it's opaque you can't see through it so uh, that helps it keep longer this one uh, the thing i like about these bottles also is uh that they can't they come with the directions the little stickers that you put on it that says what they are what they have with it and then how long all that stuff takes to do that and the whole setup with even with the aqua mirror in it is uh 1.3 ounces the little dropper bottle you do not want to store it in this because after about a day, this goes bad. So what you would do is that every day you'd pre-mix and then you can just use this all day. So you don't have to wait that five minutes. That's all you're knocking out with this is five minutes that you're waiting for the two solutions to mix. But uh, you can do that. I really like this idea. So other than that, that's all I've got for right now. If you got any questions, comments, comment below and I'll try to get back with you as soon as I can. Thanks.